Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over some more advanced graphics settings from Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if you think that sounds interesting, then I think you should stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Today we're not going to be going over any of the in-game graphics settings. We're going to get a little bit more advanced and we're going to jump into the Microsoft Flight Simulator config file for PC and VR. Before we jump into this, make sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. Smash on that thumbs up button it really helps us get found by viewers like you. So the first thing that we need to do if you have Microsoft Flight Simulator running is to close out the application. So we're gonna go right up here to the top and exit right out of it. Next, the easiest way to find the config file for Microsoft Flight Simulator is through a community shortcut that you should have on your desktop. So if you are unsure about how to get to your community folder or how to locate it, over here on the right is how to find the location if you have the store-bought version. And over here on the left is how to find it via the Steam version. All right, so now that you've located the community folder and added a shortcut to your desktop, all you need to do now is to double click on the community shortcut folder. Now, once you do, we're gonna go up here to the string at the very top and we're gonna click on local cache. Once you click on local cache, we're gonna go all the way to the bottom of this list and you're gonna see the user CFG file. So once you find the file, just give it a left click and then right click on it and then you can choose how you want to open the file. Anyway, so you're going to select the program that you wish to open it with. Once you select that, it will then bring up all the different parameters that we can adjust in the config file for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if we take a look at this at the top, first it's going to show us what type of graphics card we're using, and then some resolutions underneath of that. The only setting that I'd like to change in here is the ray tracing. I found that after Sim Update 7, the ray tracing was turned off again. Yours will most likely be zero. We just want to backspace and set that to one. That's going to enable the ray tracing. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate comments and say, well, it's not available. Gentlemen, that's not acceptable. And it's not yet um, implemented in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I'm going to tell you that it made a difference in the past updates for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So go ahead and give it a try and let me know down in the comments what your results are by switching this on. So most of these other graphics settings below are going to be able to be adjusted using the in-game graphics settings of Microsoft Flight Simulator. But there are a couple here at the bottom that cannot be adjusted. So if we go down here to post process, all of these features right here are non-adjustable on the in-game graphics settings. So let's go over these real quick and I'll show you what I use. And again, if anybody uses something different, please post your results down below and what system you're using. Now I'm not gonna go through each of these and explain exactly what they do. So let's go through each of these and I'll show you what I have mine set on. For the first one is the eye adaptation. I keep that one in the on position. Next is color grading and I also like to keep that on. Now, some people find that this oversaturates the image and turning color grading off can help with the oversaturation. For me, I like using the color grading. I don't seem to have the oversaturation again. Mileage may vary based upon system. Next down is the sharpening factor. I like to keep this on. Now, if you are noticing some blocking on edges or some over sharpening effects, you might have better success with keeping the sharpening off. So to do that again, you would just delete the one and put a zero in its place. We're gonna move down to the next one, which is fringe. Fringe I also keep in the on position. Lens distortion is off. Dirt is one. Below that we have lens flare, which is zero off and film grain. This is another big one. A lot of people still get some distortions with their clouds or as they can see some tiling effects or pixelization in the clouds. Turning film grain off is really, really going to help that and eliminate that graininess 
that you might get while you're looking at the clouds. So you just want to go to film grain, come on down, delete the one that's probably there, and input a zero. Below that we have vignette, we have that in the on position, and below that is the lens blur multiplier and the fringe multiplier, both set at one. Now that takes care of all the PC settings for monitors. Now we're gonna move on to the VR settings down below. So again, we're just gonna scroll all the way down and you can see we're in the VR section as stated right below here. We're gonna go all the way down until we get to the post-process options. Now these are gonna be very different from our PC options. And again, we're gonna go through these and I'll explain what I've done in my testing with the Reverb G2. So the first one here is the eye adaptation. And I've tried this on or off in the Reverb G2. And I found that keeping it on helped make the display not so bright in my eyes. It's really hard to explain, but if you test that for yourself, you may see what I'm talking about. Then pretty much everything else underneath of that, I have turned off. Color grading is off, sharpening is off, fringe is off, lens distortions off. Oh, I must say that if you are using a G2 and you seem like you're getting a little bit of over sharpening, make sure you come in here and just verify that your sharpening is off. If it's on or it says one, make sure you just turn that to a zero. So now that we have set all of these to what we want, we need to make sure that we save them correctly. So you need to go up to the file and then go down to save, hit save. So once you have these saved, all you need to do now is exit out of it, start up the sim and you are good to go. I hope everybody enjoyed the episode today and got a lot of information out of it. If you have any questions, please post it down below in the comments section. And while you're down there, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. Smash on that thumbs up button really helps us get found by viewers like you. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody.